A recently hired, rather brash tax appraiser visited a local farm and announced to the farmer that he was there to appraise the property for taxation. The farmer said, fine, just avoid the field next to the barn. The appraiser pulled out a card from his pocket and shoved it in the face of the farmer. This card gives me the authority to look at all of your property. And he immediately climbed the fence to look at the field next to the barn. Just as he approached the barn, a huge bull with long horns emerged from the barn and started chasing the young tax appraiser. Help me, the young man shouted to the farmer. The farmer shouted back, show him your card. The Gospels record a story of a wealthy man who came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Notice the word must. The same word is found just one chapter earlier. Then Peter approached Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times? These two questions strike me as questions asked by a minimalist, someone who only is willing to do what is minimally required. It's as if the one asks Jesus, what are the least number of good deeds that I must do to earn eternal life? And the other asks, what's the minimum number of times I have to forgive somebody? In other words, how little can I do to fulfill my obligation? The statement made by the Apostle Paul in his magnificent description of love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, is a stark contrast to minimalists. Paul declares, love never ends. Love is never satisfied with just getting by. Love keeps on. It has no end. I read a story in the New York Times about a police detective in Poughkeepsie, New York, by the name of Skip Mannion, who was called to investigate a hit-and-run incident. A migrant worker from Mexico was killed by a drunk driver who had left the scene. Detective Mannion was given two assignments, find and arrest the driver of the car, and secondly, notify the victims first of kin. He did exactly what he was assigned to do. The hit-and-run driver was apprehended and charged with vehicular homicide. Then Mannion contacted Tenorio's wife in Oaxaca, Mexico. She pleaded with Detective Mannion that her husband's body be returned to his home in Mexico. However, she had no money. He told the migrant's wife that he had done all that he was required to do, but hearing the desperate plea of the man's wife, he decided to do more. He called his local pastor, and through their joint efforts, they raised $22,583. Detective Mannion took Tenorio's body to his family. In addition, he replaced their tin roof that was held down with stones with a real roof, provided running water for their house, and purchased clothing and toys for the children. Here's what struck me. The detective had done what he was assigned to do, but love compelled him to do more because love never ends in our own lives. I wonder if we are more likely to do what is simply required of us, or does love motivate us to go beyond minimal expectations? That's something to consider. <laughs>